The Royals are as close to do or die as they can be to keep their playoff hopes alive. And when they needed a big game, James stepped up with a season-high 10 strikeouts and a 7-1 victory. That takes some of the pressure off of Jordano Ventura, who makes his major league debut tonight on Fox Sports Kansas City. Royals baseball comes to you from Coffin Stadium. Game two with the Cleveland Indians. The Royals picked up a game in the wild card last night, taking game one, 7-1. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the ballpark. I'm Ryan Lefevre. And for a long time for the Royals, it's been all about down the road. Wait till next year. Wait till the year after that. And, of course, all that changed this past off season when the Royals acquired a couple of veteran pitchers, James Shields and Irvin Santana. And here are the Royals now in the middle of September, eight games above 500. However, let's take a look down the road, shall we? As Giordano Ventura has been called up, a surprise, but the Royals had a need in the starting rotation. So instead of joining the Royals next year, he'll make his big league debut tonight against Corey Kluber, who has pitched very well against the Royals this season. And let's welcome in Rex Hudler. This is a big night for Giordano Ventura. It's a big night for the Royals tonight, Hud. It's also a big night for the Royals as they look into the future. Right, you are again, Ryan. I'm going to tell you, taking the baton from James Shields, the current ace, this kid Ventura could be a future ace. So there shouldn't be any pressure on him at all. But it's a lot more about the game than it is his Major League debut. So put all the jitters away and follow Salvador Perez. That's all you got to do. This kid's got the stuff. I mean, last year in the Futures game, the world's got a small glimpse of him. But tonight... Hopefully he tips his caps to the K here and the people that are going goo-goo uh, over this kid. He's got great stuff, 100 miles an hour. Hopefully he can locate it down in the zone, control those emotions, and become the ace of the future that they believe he can. He can follow Sal's lead behind the plate and maybe his lead at the plate. Sal's triple got the Royals going in the middle innings as they scored five of the seven runs.
22-year-old Dominican right-hander Jordano Ventura as he is set to play and pitch for the Kansas City Royals in a huge, huge game. Joel Goldberg back here at Kauffman Stadium, and the young Dominican is set to go. A pretty calm kid that throws triple digits can get up there over 100 miles an hour, and he will be the 11th youngest starter to make his major league debut for the Royals. Back in the early 70s, Mark Littell was the youngest. Kevin Apier was extremely young back in 1989. Belito Perez in 87 was a young Dominican pitcher, just like your Donald Ventura. They didn't have Twitter then, but they have it now in Ventura today tweeting. I will be taking the mound today for my at MLB debut versus the Indians of Cleveland with God by my side at Royals. Hashtag let's throw fire. Hashtag Royals. That is what he tweets every time he starts. This one comes in the major leagues. So he'll get set to throw to Salvador Perez when we come back on Fox Sports Kansas City. the Missouri Lottery play Cadillac Riches Scratchers game and you could win a new Cadillac and by your Kansas City Chevy dealer the official vehicle of the Kansas City Royals late arriving crowd a big walk up crowd as the Royals are just two and a half games back in the wild card it's also the final t-shirt Tuesday of the year so that added bonus for the fans tonight on a beautiful night all the rain is gone we have a Beautiful blue sky overhead, and it's going to start warming up again beginning tomorrow. Tonight's game is brought to you in high definition by Time Warner Cable, the official TV, internet, and home phone provider of the Kansas City Royals. Well, with a win last night, the Indians could have moved into a spot for the wild card, but the Royals took game one 7 1, so the Indians remain six game back. The Royals are eight games back. Cleveland one half back in the wild card. The Royals are two and a half back. So a lot on the line for both teams. And the top two teams are playing one another in Tampa Bay, Texas and the Rays. Well, here he is, 22 year old Yorvano Ventura. Not very tall, 5'11 and just 180 pounds, but has a big arm. He sure does, Ryan. And Salvador Perez is going to do all he can to contain this kid and keep him down in the zone. Emotions will be big. 
Okay, like his fastball. He's got a big fastball, 95 to 100. Sometimes he'll go above it. Nice big curveball. Couple different speeds to the curve he'll use in the changeup. And this is to be ex expected. He's excited, fired up. We saw the same thing from Danny Duffy when he came back from the disabled list for the first time this year. And just missing, Salvador Perez seemed to be a little surprise there as Field and Colbreth might be squeezing the rookie. First two innings, especially the first, will be the biggest. So Michael Bourne is on after just four pitches. And a look at the Indians lineup tonight. A lineup that produced just one run last night. All right, watch out for Michael Brantley. He's down in that fifth spot. He's one of their clutch hitters, 349 average at Thunders in scoring position. And watch out for Ryan Rayburn, the right fielder. He's got a good, strong throwing arm, and he likes a good fastball. Seventy-one perfect degrees for a game two of the Royals and the Indians. Nick Swisher, one for two with a couple of walks last night. And there's Ventura's first major league strike. Yeah, you can understand the emotions, or maybe you can understand it. In case you don't, it's a big moment for this young man. And then back with a changeup, and he just missed outside. One ball, one strike. So to be able to control those emotions, the best way is just to experience it, get out there, and get out of that first inning the best way you can. Try to keep the ball down. Don't worry about the running game. Let Salvador Perez, who's thrown out over 30% of runners, let him worry about that. Oh, that'll take care of the leadoff walk. Double play, two down in the first. 6-4-3 is a beautiful thing. The defense has been marvelous all year. One of the best in baseball, for sure. And Moustakis, the moose has been loose. Not necessarily with the bat, although that's coming. Moose has been fabulous at third base. Good range. You can see this. Nice tailor-made 6-4-3 routine. One pitch, two big outs. And he can... Breathe a sigh of relief, and now he's ahead with a strike at 98 to Jason Kipnis, who struck out three times last night. He has a very good curveball, a hard curveball, and that missed outside ball one. I like how he's free and easy. I like how the ball comes out of his hand so far early. And the tempo. One and two. Very poised. Struck him out. How about that for a comeback in just his first major league inning? A four pitch walk, a double play, and his first strikeout. Whoa, if that's a sign of things to come, bring it, baby.
honor the Pirates Hall of Famer and great humanitarian and each team has a Roberto Clemente award nominee with a chance for the one major league winner and no surprise that the Royals nominee is Billy Butler on the field with his wife Katie and his two daughters. Billy has done a lot of work in the community with the Royals specifically with the Bishop Sullivan Center and that's Mike Matthews on the far right of the center waving his hand. Billy and his wife have helped raise over three hundred and eighty thousand dollars for the Bishop Sullivan Center which provides emergency relief and an average of about twelve hundred meals per month. Fantastic. Oh Billy Butler's family needs to be congratulated with their work off the field and any time your name can be attached to Roberto Clemente's you can't get a better award. Hope he wins it. So Billy ready to bat fourth against Corey Kluber who throws a strike to Alex Gordon. Alex has two home runs against Kluber. The first one he hit was on Kluber's first pitch as a major league starter. It wasn't his major league debut, but it was his first start last year in August. And Alex homered against him. And now he slaps it foul into the seats off a of third, late on a fastball. And the count is 0-2. All right. What they'll see from Kluber is a 90 to 93, 94 mile hour fastball. That's where he'll top out, but he's comfortable in the low 90s, a two seamer. He's got a nice slider cutter combination. Those are his out pitches, curve and a change. One ball, two strikes. The other home run Alex hit against Kluber was on July the 2nd, and that was a grand slam. July the 2nd of this year. Over the mound, and a tough play for Kipnis, and he gets Alex by a half step, one down. All right, defending behind Kluber. It's a defense that's not too shabby. They really can, can make the plays, especially right at him. But when you have a speed team like the Royals, it puts pressure on the defense. Brantley, he's been pretty good out there in the outfield and left field. He's got a good, strong throwing arm. Bar Bourne has been really up in his game in center. So they're going to be able to get any mistakes that have any air under him from Kluber. Ball one to Bonifacio. Emilio had two hits last night, scored a run, and had another delayed steal. And takes inside again, 2 0. I asked him about that before the game, and he said when he was in the minor leagues, Brett Butler was his manager. And because of his speed, teams were adjusting to him, and he's having a tough time getting stolen bases. Slide steps, paying close attention to him when he was at first. So Brett Butler said, Well, here's a way that you can combat that. Taught him the delayed steal, and he's one of the only guys in the game, at least at this level, that uses it. Yeah, and I should say he used these four for four with him this year. Now, what's interesting, too, is a three and one count here. Bonifacio likes to bunt, he likes to push it, too. Is Chisenhall, the third baseman for the tribe, he breaks towards this position here to, towards the shortstop area to guard against any, any ball he would push by the pitcher. Now, he's taking a chance that Bonifacio doesn't drop one down the line. But right here, see if you can take a strike and get on base. And he was taking all the way, three and two. That's a little 95. Some pretty good movement on it. That's something else you don't see very often. A left-hand batter pushing a bunt to the left side. It's the element of surprise. And he's on with a walk. And when you're creative and not afraid, that makes you even a more dangerous player to defend. Now Kluber, he's five and one with a 2-3-3 ERA in nine starts following a tribe loss this season. So Francona is happy to have him in this position tonight with those numbers and big wins after losses. So we'll see what they can do. But Hosmer, you can throw out any numbers on any opposing pitcher from here on the rest of the way. Nolan Ryan could be making a start here and the Royals are going to find some way to beat him. And Hosmer chops it foul on one. 
One for five last night, but that doesn't tell the whole story. He had three very hard hit outs. So one for five and very easily could have been four for five and he just hits better every month. I mean, you wonder when is his best month going to be? Well, the way he's going this year, it's going to be the last month of the year. Yeah, he's got a nice level swing. Bat stays in the zone a long time. Uses the whole field. Just inside. One ball, one strike. But you talked about the delay steal last night. It really worked against Jan Gomes. It's surprise. It's what it, it's. It's the element of surprise. And when he took off on the delay. Jan Gomes dropped the ball when he found out he was running, and that's what it's all about. Gomes is really good, though. He's thrown out 41% of runners this year. He's got a really good catch and throw stroke. Slash back to last night. Let's see how it worked. Bonifacio, watch him. Three crow hops at first. Ready? One, two, three. Watch Gomes. Oh, surprised him, and he dropped the ball. That's a good example of what speed does to defenders. They make mistakes because they're trying to get you. Hit well. Deep left center field. Bourne is back, and it's off the wall. Bonifacio to third. Eddie Rodriguez will wave him home, and the throw hits the mound. So Eric Hosmer gives the Royals a 1-0 lead in the first inning. Just got through talking about it, how Hosmer uses the whole field. And... He's fortunate Kluber is that this ball didn't leave the yard and it's not 2 nothing. However, he didn't quite square it up because when he does square up one that way, it's way out of the park. Off the wall, nothing Bourne could do. And Eddie Rodriguez, the third base coach, it's pedal to the metal. Ball hit the side of the mound. The throw was off and there's Danny Duffy and the rest of them pumped about that early run. That is Hosmer's 11th RBI this year against the Indians. And now he's in scoring position for Billy Butler. But Billy you know, had two hits last night and drove in a run. He's really upped his mark, Ryan, with runners in scoring position. Billy's up at 352 now. He was down around 300, under 300 for most of the year. But recently, these last couple of months, he's really picked it up as far as driving runs in been staying in the middle of the field. He's not a dead pole hitter. And fumbled by Kipnis, but he has plenty of time to throw out Billy. And Hosmer goes to third with two down. Corey Kluber went on the disabled list. A little over a month ago, he had a strain to the middle finger in his right hand. So this is just his third start since coming back. He has pitched very well since coming back from the DL. He has won his two starts against the Mets and then on Thursday at the White Sox. This is his fourth start this year against KC. And now Sal with Hosmer at third and two down, and there's a slider in for strike one. Sal had three hits last night and a walk. So he has continued his surge in the month of September. Now over 400 in his last 10 games. And he's driven in seven. Oh, man. He's been driving the bus. Popped up. And Kipnis will make the play to end the inning with the Royals strike first. With one out, Bonifacio walks. And Eric Hosmer drives it off the wall in left center field to give the Royals a 1 0 lead. It's on.
Monte Day. And here's a look at tonight's Toyota League leaders. The Royals are working on one of their best second halves ever. However, the Tigers have been right with the Royals, so they haven't gained any ground in the Central, but they have picked up nine games in the wild card since the All-Star break. The only Royals team with the highest or higher winning percentage in the second half than 621 would be the team that most believe was the best Royals team of all time, the 1977 Royals, who won 102 games. And a strike from Ventura on a fastball well located at 98 miles an hour. I'll say right down the middle. But, you know, nice to see the Kansas City Royals in that elite group. And once again, it's how you finish the season, not how you start. Unfortunate that the offense of the Royals didn't come on early like they expected or else they would have challenged the Detroit Tigers this year. Had their offense been clicking from the first two months of the season, two or three months, they, they couldn't find their stride. Three balls, one strike. Ventura walked his first big league hitter, Michael Bourne, on four straight pitches. But then was able to calm himself down. He got a double play ground ball against Swisher and then struck out Kipnis. And now another walk. And that's nothing new for Carlos Santana. That's his 86th walk of the year. And Ventura is back to the stretch position. Well, Ventura's, he's got a very nice strike out to ball ratio three to one 155 strikeouts 33 walks that's really low so he's I'm gonna I'm gonna blame those two walks on a little bit of nerves and hopefully he can continue to stay down in that zone and recover because you when you give teams walks you're opening up a door for them and 98 for a strike to Brantley Brantley had two hits last night batting at 274 Laid on a fastball at 99, and it's 0-2. Listening to one of the best pregame shows in baseball today, like we have, and Joe Goldberg and Jeff Montgomery on High V Live, Royals Live. Had they had J.J. Bacolo on there, the assistant general manager in scouting and player development, and he talked about how this kid, Ventura, this season was able to control his emotions and keep them in check. That's the most impressive thing that they saw outside of his stuff. There's 101. There's J.J. You know, the, the, the Royals have an extremely strong minor league system, and that's the nuts and bolts of an organization. That bodes well for the future. But these guys know that Ventura was able and capable to make this start here, an important game. Her ball is blocked by Sal. Two balls, two strikes. Tell you, high praise goes to Salvador Perez in his first full season. The, the respect that Ned Yost has for Salvi, the rest of the league has for him, and the fact that Ned said, hey, just trust Salvi. That's the key. Stay with Salvi. He'll guide you through. Pretty impressive for a, a young catcher. And Ned's comments before the game, and some of us were coming from different angles as to how much information do you want Ventura to have tonight? There's a lot more available than just a week ago when he was at AAA. And what kind of information do you want him to avoid? And Ned's answer was, the only information I want him to have is to throw whatever Salvador Perez tells you to throw. Back to Ventura. Another double play. I'll tell you what, not being known with that kind of velocity on his fastball, you're typically a fly ball pitcher, so he's not known as a ground ball pitcher, but this early in his first two innings to get a double play in each inning, and look at how calm he was there. He didn't panic. He took his time, got it over to one of the best shortstops in the American League. That's a huge help. 
That might have been his best pitch of the night. Not to Brantley with the throw to second base. I mean you can imagine the way his heart is pumping. I mean if you'd have thrown that ball in the fountains. I mean you really couldn't blame him. And just a nice easy on target throw to Escobar. And now 99 miles an hour to as Cabrera. Oh free and easy gas. <laughs> 100. And it just missed one ball one strike. Okay, you know also what they say about Ventura is they're impressed with the command that he has with his changeup. Now that was one that got away a little bit. But that's a field pitch and for a young pitcher to have pretty good command with that. That's talks about his maturity. Long run for Dyson. All the way to the track in left center field to run it down. So two leadoff walks, but both times Ventura comes back and gets a double play, and he's faced the minimum through the first two innings. Two of the final homestand of the year, six games. So, four more after tonight. And we want you to come out and support the team, fill up Coffin Stadium, and the Royals and 610 Sports have a September special for you. You can now get a lower level field plaza seat for just $15. That's to the final game of the Indian Series tomorrow night. And that's a discount of over 50%. Go to Royals.com slash 610 to get your tickets. And let's pack the K as Mike Moustakis lines it to right, and that sails over Rayburn. And Moustakis will be at second base with nobody out. Great to hear the Moose calls early, especially with for Moustakis with his 24th double. On the first pitch you saw, had top spin on it. Okay, if he gets underneath it, it might have a chance, but it's well struck with a good short, clean swing. However, Rayburn misjudged it. He wasn't sure how to read it, so he started in, then he went sideways and took a bad route. That helped Moose get into second base. So doubles in the first two innings. Hosmer's double scored Bonifacio in the first. And now runner is second, nobody out for David Lowe. David Lowe knows what to do here in this situation. And he bunts. Kluber looked to third. He'll throw to first. Oh. And Adrian Johnson, the first base umpire, started to signal safe. And then called out low. And David Lowe on his way back might be saying, well, which one is it? He was motoring down that line. Now look, 
Kluber, he's a veteran. He's, he wasn't going to panic and try to throw the ball away at third base. He wants to get it out here, but he took some time, and by the time he threw it, look at this. <laughs> how about that call? Safe and then out. Look at the emotions. They're flying high here. But anyway, great job of moving him over. Francona's infielders are in. And a strike from Kluber to Alcides Escobar, who has a 10 game hitting streak. Okay, here it is again. He kind of. He got him, but it was the umpire's reaction that really got the crowd stirred up. But situations like these right here, Ryan. One out, met runner at third base, infield in. In one game playoffs like they're in, you got to get him in. Looked like he just tried to guide it to the right side, and he realized, Escobar does, that he did not swing at a strike. So 239 overall, but he's hit in 10 straight. And extended that last night with two hits and an RBI. Kluber's best pitch is his slider. He'll throw it 50% of the time. And trying to change the eye level. One ball, two strikes. Okay, Eski utilizes the right side of the field with the best of them in the middle. This is a good situation to try to focus right back up the middle. Pick up the run. He wants to get underneath it. And hopefully it's deep enough to get a sack fly. You see where they're playing. They're going to try to get him at home. And just foul off to the first base side. Still one and two. Eddie Rodriguez going over the plan with Mike Moustakis where the balls hit. On the ground, in the air, what to do. And just barely making contact to stay alive. Escobar is comfortable with a two strike approach because he's a, a bad ball hitter and he can stretch out the, the plate. On, and he'll doink hits in there just like that on a pitch like that. He's protecting. Can't get called out looking. Stayed up. Escobar took a look at it, and Kluber picks up his first strikeout. Got to be on the offensive. It's, it's way too good to take. Got to get that run home. So now the infield relaxes with two outs and Dyson at the plate. But Dyson, of course, can be a very good bunter. I really liked his approach in the Detroit series. It seemed like it finally hit him. You know, I'm a good bunner. He he was ready to bunt. It seemed like every time he went to the plate. And in his case, with his speed, it doesn't have to be a perfect bunt. I was just going to say that, Ryan. You can see the defenders. The fact that Kipnis is way back here like that tells me that all Dyson has to do is just bunt one right there if he wants to, and he can walk into first base. Get the run home. Chopped to short. Cabrera plays the short hop. That's a very good play and a big play. Till the Royals get the leadoff double. Unable to turn that into a run. They lead 1-0 at the end of two.
Bucs with playoff implications. Texas all over Tampa Bay tonight. Elvis Andrews goes deep just as third on the year. Six to one Rangers. And Boston can tell you about that after we see Donald Ventura deliver his first pitch of the third inning. Got to like the way the Red Sox started things off against the Orioles. Dustin Pedroia, the leadoff home run. He's been leading off with Jacoby Ellsbury hurt. And the Red Sox on top of the Orioles, 2 nothing. So all of that early on. Good news for the Royals. And let's do some scoreboard watching. Our Panera scoreboard taking us around the American League playoff implications. Toronto on top of the Yankees. And there you see it. Boston 2 nothing. Texas 6-1. to one. And we will keep our eye on that, Ryan, all night long. All right. Thanks, Joel. As Bonifacio is going to throw out Ryan Rayburn. So Ventura gets the leadoff man for the first time, although that really hasn't bothered him. When the leadoff man is reached, he walked Bourne in the first, promptly got a double play from Swisher, and then the same thing in the second inning, leadoff walk, and then got a double play from Brantley. It's a good formula. And here's Lonnie Chisenhall, who drove in the only run for the Indians last night in the Royals' 7-1 win. He homered to right field his 12th of the year. Now if you're a right hand pitcher and you're not very tall and again Ventura is listed at 5'11 and you're from the Dominican Republic you can imagine who Ventura admired growing up Pedro Martinez. And you can see a little bit of Pedro Martinez, at least I can, in his delivery. You know, I haven't had a chance to shake hands with the young man, but Pedro Martinez had extremely long fingers. And they'll tell you the bigger the, the longer the fingers, the longer that ball stays on your fingertips, and it has a little bit of late life and a little hop to the ball when it comes out. At least it did for Pedro. But most Dominican-born pitchers all admire Pedro Martinez. Two down to Jan Gomes. And a strike at 99. Or I take that back. Ruled a little high. Ball one. Gomes 0 for 4 last night. A couple of strikeouts. Remember the Royals struck out 17 Indians last night. That's a team record for a nine inning game. One ball, one strike. Hearing a lot of oohs and ahs from. The Kaufman crowd here. Beautiful. Nice walk up crowd here. Place looks like a playoff atmosphere tonight. Strike called. Hey, he took something off it. It was only 98. What a talent. <laughs> and look at him. He's just standing and waiting for Gomes to get back into the box. Can't wait to throw his next pitch. And line to center field. Dyson comes up. He trapped it. So the crowd reacts as if it's the final out. And Gomes has the Indians' first hit. Bill Wilkie. Nice call. He was right on that. Dyson, great break in on contact. Tough play here. But he's right. Bill Wilkie. He saw it. Caught it on the short hop. Great effort. It's all you can do. He tried to sell it, but Bill Wilkie was right on it. Nice call. And a bad swing by Michael Bourne. I would think Ventura will remember Michael Bourne the rest of his life as the first major league hitter he ever faced. And he threw four straight balls to walk him, but that came right back and got Nick Swisher to ground into a double play. Michael Bourne struck out three times last night and he was really at odds with home plate umpire Brian Onora something that continued after the game was over. Yes. To Ooh. Hosmer and like a hockey goalie comes up with a big glove save to end the inning. Three scoreless innings to begin Ventura's big league career and a one nothing lead.
Sally Stewart. And after her son created the program with Shawnee Mission East, Susie, with the help of Sally, took over and continued Pack of Pals, which is a group of teenagers that host social events for special needs students. With the assistance of students who are in regular education classes, Pack of Pals provides a much needed positive social interaction and sense of belonging to those who may have otherwise been excluded. So they're sitting in the Buck O'Neill legacy seat at tonight's game. Thank you, Susie and Sally. That's extremely important to make those kids feel like they're accepted. Way to go. Alex grounded out to second in the first inning against Corey Kluber. Alex lost a 10 game hitting streak last night, but it wasn't a lost night altogether. He scored one of the seven runs. And he takes ball one from Kluber. Royals bouncing back last night as they have so many times this year after an emotional loss on Sunday in Detroit, which followed an emotional win on Saturday in Detroit. That was quite a three game series. And Alex helped save the day with a defensive play in the bottom of the ninth inning on Saturday in Detroit. One of his 15 outfield assists. Yeah, you know, and I had to ask him about it, Ryan. I said, tell me what you're going through right here. He said, I wanted to make sure I got the ball to Escobar. Okay, that was a, one of the greatest plays of the year, no question. The pick by Salvador and the tag, the game over. Gordon said that he made sure when he saw the ball, it was like slow motion, he went to the wall. He says, I, got, I don't want to be too quick. I don't want to bobble. Pick it up and get it to Escobar. And now I said, what did you see from there? He goes, I saw Eskies throw. I thought it was going to hit Prince in the back. And he goes, I didn't see the pick by Salvi. All I heard was silence. And that told me he made the play. He said it was it was a one of the, the most important plays that he's made. And think about it, a simple relay play. But that's the attention to detail that Ned Yost has his outfielders, infielders, everybody paying attention, not trying to do too much just make the play and there was a play in the first inning last night it didn't make any highlight reels but the Royals handling the ball in the right field corner prevented a run in the top of the first inning which really set the tone for the game set the tone defensively at least as Bonifacio takes ball one he walked with one out in the first and then Hosmer got him home with a double. And just inside 2 0. Bonifacio wasn't with the Royals the three previous times they faced Kluber, so that was his first plate appearance when he walked in the first. And late on a fastball, 2 and 1. Ah, he was undecided there. He's thinking maybe I should take a strike. Oh, no, I'll swing. That's what that was. Two and two. That's where Kluber wants to stay. Right down there. Give up some ground balls. That was a, a good pitch for him. A hitter, lots of times, he's, he hasn't made up his mind that I'm going to swing right here no matter what. They're looking in a certain zone, looking for a certain pitch, and if it's there, I'm on it. Hall's glove who went into a slide and Bonifacio will be on for a second time. A base hit for Bonifacio. Yeah, I love his approach at the plate. He understands the kind of player he is and the hitter he is. He's a slap hitter. That's exactly what you do. That's a really nice stroke. Let the ball travel deep. Most third basemen are in on speed guys. Take advantage of it. Slap it by him. You know, there's a belief, and I don't know if it's true, I don't know if anyone's ever researched it, or if you can't even research it, but there's always been a feeling that when you bring the infield in, you raise the hitter's average by 100 points, just because the infield has limited range. They have less reaction time. And while the infield as a group wasn't in with Bonifacio, when he comes up, almost every time the third baseman will be in. And... To me, that's just a 
big target with those little words above it saying hit it here. So you look middle away and execute that. Bonifacio, and he's going to be safe at second base as he got a huge break. And then he realized that he was in no man's land, so he just figured, well, I'll continue going to second base. And that's what you do. Some guys with less experience will stop in the middle of the base bases and go, oh, man, I messed up. But that's what you do. If you get caught and he doesn't throw it home, you keep going. And look, it's speed causes mistakes. We say that every night these Royals play because they've got a bunch of team speed. So he gets a stolen base. So if he's the master of the delayed steal, what would you call that steal? <laughs> That's a premature steal. <laughs> How about that? But you know they're in the back of his mind, no question about it. Speed puts pressure on defenses. 15th stolen base as a Royal. Blocked by Gomes. Ball one on Hosmer. He doubled to left center in the first inning, driving in Bonifacio. It's kind of like running out of the bank without an alarm. <laughs> yes, he, he, he just he, he took off. And by the time Kluber knew it, he was almost a second base. And Struble couldn't find the handle and make the tag. Two and oh. Kluber doing all he can to keep the ball down on Osborne. Cabrera made a move for second base and Kluber pitches to Hosmer two balls one strike. That's a play that requires a lot of concentration on the part of the pitcher. It is but when you have a shortstop like Cabrera that, that motion to him throw home. He keeps his composure and he goes home. Seeing a shortstop bolt for the bag having the patience to allow him to run back to short. And then focus on the hitter and make a good pitch. Facio's in his head. He is. He better be careful with where he puts that ball on Hosmer, though. If the runner distracts the pitcher, could be three nothing. Three and one. Well, there's an open base. You got a dangerous hitter at the plate. We've got another dangerous hitter on deck. And the Indians might pitch Hosmer very carefully here and try and for a double play against Billy Butler. And not close to a strike. So Hosmer's on. To put two on with one out. A ground ball from Billy in the first inning. Got him to ground out to second base. So Billy is Bonifacio at second base, Hosmer at first, one out. And you don't have to tell Billy what to do here. He doesn't want to roll over his hands and hit into a ground ball. Stay in the middle of the field, try to find a hole. bit high ball one. Billy has grounded into more double plays than anybody in the American League this year. 24. But he wants to stay away from that. And too tall again. Two balls and no strikes. There aren't many pitchers in the league that have done this to Billy Butler. Well, Billy's had a tough time against him. One out of 13 after grounding out in the first inning with five strikeouts. Off 
the end of the bat. And Kluber took just enough off that pitch. I think Billy figured he was going to get a 92, 93 mile an hour fastball. He took a rip, and that came in at 89. That frustrates more hitters than any other pitch. Take a little bit off. BP fastball, a little bit of a cutter maybe. Excellent pitch there, 2-0. Oh. He's got a combination cutter and a slider. Slider breaks a little bit more than the cutter. 3-1. Salvador Perez is on deck. So you're kind of tempting fate by pitching around Hosmer and going after Billy Butler. But how far do you want that to go? A long way right here. Well, we'll find out because the bases are loaded with one out and Salvador Perez coming up. And before we get to Sal, the Indians will have a little meeting on the mound and we'll go to Joe Goldberg. And Ryan, this might be the guy that you want up right now. Coming into this game, he is batting 403 since August 23rd. That is the highest batting average in all of the major leagues. 23 RBIs, third in the majors. 714 slugging percentage, third in the majors. This guy has been on fire, not just the last few games, but the last few weeks, right? You're right, Joe. But with the bases loaded this year, Salvador Perez is three for five, hit 600 with two doubles. So Bonifacio at third, Hosmer at second, and Butler at first. He's a fan favorite for a million reasons. And one of those reasons is when the fans come out to support the Royals, Sal usually does something big here. He's been much better at Kauffman Stadium than he has been on the road. A single and two walks allowed by Kluber with one out. And he misses outside, ball one. Royals have four slams on the year. Got him to chase one that was not a strike. One and one. Okay, exhale just like he did. Take a deep breath. Kluber is the one with the pressure on him here, not Salvador Perez. That's what you got to tell yourself. Deep enough for one. All three Royals are going to go back to tag. Only one will advance, and it's the important one. Bonifacio down the line, and the Royals lead 2 0. Okay, the Royals couldn't capitalize with the runner at third base in the second inning. They couldn't get him home, but they did there. They had to get at least one home, and Salvi did it. Okay, he. It was on the outer half. He almost he almost guided it up there. Hosmer did, did the right thing by not advancing. 11 outfield assists by Brantley. Don't want to give him number 12. And that's a much shorter throw. And many times on that play, you can tag the runner out third before the other runner cross, crosses the plate, meaning no run. Ooh, you're exactly right. So Moose Moose gets a breaking ball after his last at bat. First pitch he saw, he laced a double in right center. So a two-nothing lead at least for Ventura before he comes back out for the fourth inning. Two and oh. Now a couple of hitters ago, we showed you what Kluber has done to Billy Butler in the past, which really favored Kluber. But it's been much different against Mike Moustakis. This has been a very good matchup for Moustakis with his double in the second inning. He's 5 for 11 against Kluber. So he really reads him well. 
And lines it into left center field. He gets another base hit. Hosmer scores. And Billy Butler will be held at the last moment. Now the throw comes in high and wild. But the Indians with a good throw would have nailed Billy had he been sent home. So Mike Moustakis is two for two. And he gives the Royals a 3 nothing lead. He's putting on a gap to gap clinic. First at bat. Nice. He split the gap in right center. Now this one with runners on. Waits for the ball. Great hitting count. Waited for his pitch. And he deposited it in left center. What a good at bat there. Waited for his pitch. Good job by Eddie Rodriguez. He had Billy coming. But you know, at the last minute like that, you have to see how the plays develop behind him. Eddie Rodriguez did the right thing. And now David Lowe fouls it away. David Lowe drove in a run in the game last night. So he has 31 RBIs. Last night's was as a pinch hitter. He has. 31 total RBIs, 20 with two outs. And the Indians are already working in the bullpen. Yeah, this is David Lowe's spot. He loves hitting with two outs and runners on. And now down to the count, 0 and 2. David dropped down a sack bun in the second inning. Got him to pop up. Cabrera makes the play to end the inning. Two more runs for the Royals in the third. Perez and Mustakis driving in the runs. And Jordano Ventura has a 3 0 lead. Well, so far so good through three innings for Giordano Ventura in his big league debut. Twice the Royals have turned a double play behind him after leadoff walks. This one he started in the second inning. And on offense, the Royals have given him a 3 0 lead. As he's second time through the order now. Michael Bourne grounded out sharply to first to end the third inning. That was the beginning of the second time through. And now Nick Swisher. Swisher grounded into the first double play. 6-4-3 in the first. He'll be followed by Jason Kipnis and Carlos Santana. There's that curveball and it's two and one. Okay, and yesterday Ventura was here. Dave Island keeping an eye on Ventura had him along with Danny Duffy go chart the game underneath 
the stadium in front of the TV. Okay, and he said Duffy and him went through the Cleveland Indians lineup one time, and then that's all he wanted them to see. He wanted him to come back out on the in the dugout and sit and watch the big league atmosphere. Let him watch the rest of the game. Sit next to Irvin Santana, fellow Dominican, and the right guy to sit next to, talking about calming your nerves. Strike three call. So they've really taken care of this young guy. Every little step of the way. Yesterday, today, they've they've really made it as easy and comfortable for this kid as possible. Dave Island said, "Be yourself." And trust your stuff, and that's stuff right there down the middle. Split the dish. Curveball is high, ball one. I'm not suggesting that Ventura is without nerves tonight. I think we saw some in the first inning with the walk. And now he's going to get a ground ball to Bonifacio. But his nerves are different. Yeah, he's 22 years old. He's never pitched in the big leagues before. But he's pitched to big leaguers, having grown up in the Dominican Republic, winter league, big, exciting venues. So it's a new experience for him, but it's not like it's the first one like this. No, you're exactly right. That is a, is a super winter ball league. That's as close to big leagues as you're going to get. Carlos Santana walked leading off the second inning. And then he was erased when Brantley grounded into a double play. And outside with ball one. Two and oh. Santana has hit in 11 straight. He extended that with a double in the first inning last night, but then he struck out three times. And that pitch was just a little high to make it 3 and 0. Osmer backs up to get the right hop and Ventura has the ball go out of his glove. He may have taken his eye off the throw at the last moment and Santana is safe with two down. Yeah and that's exactly what he did. Ventura had his glove stuck out while he was running over there watching. Why don't you put his glove out there. You don't see that a lot. You want to go ahead and run to the base and then put the glove up and catch it. So he was a little bit nervous a little bit stiff on that one. You could see. He was looking for the base before he caught the ball. And as a result, he is charged with the air. See, now he takes a deep breath there. So when you get a pitcher off the mound and he's able to run, sometimes it gets him out of his rhythm. And you can see he was a little bit stiff with his glove out there going to first base. Inside to Brantley. And now we'll see about his ability to shake that off. Sometimes a young pitcher, sometimes a veteran pitcher, will get so mad at himself that he'll lose his game. Wow. See the life on that pitch? You know, and it's so, so smooth, very free and easy. Comes out of his arm. And the biggest thing would be his emotions and the fact that J.J. Bacolo said that he has done a great job of controlling his emotions this season. They've been watching that and we're seeing it here. Broken bat that got by Ventura but Bonifacio is there to throw out Brantley so it didn't get to him. He made a great pitch to get Brantley. The Indians are scoreless for a fourth inning and the Royals lead three nothing.
this season. Here are some very good numbers. Royals are 10 games above 500 inside the division. They have a winning record away from Coffin Stadium. They have played the second most one run games in the American League and have a winning record and have 41 come from behind wins. What do you think? You want my opinion? This one right here is the biggest one in there because what that does is that instills a characteristic whenever you fall behind in games early, your team goes, ha, got them right where we want them. We're going to come back and win this game. I love that stat right there. Three nothing Royals. Osmer drove in a run in the first inning. Perez and Moustakis in the third. Escobar had a chance to drive in a run in the second inning with a runner at third and one out, but Kluber struck him out. Kluber has just that strikeout and three walks already. And Escobar didn't mean to go around. Swisher allows the ball to get to Kipnis, and the throw is high, but Adrian Johnson says that Kluber had his foot on the bag, and Escobar is out. Well, he almost turned that excuse me swing into a base hit there. Kipnis called off Swisher. And it's an easier play for the second baseman, but he almost goosed the throw. Tried to tried to baby it over there, the throw, and it got a little high on him, but Kluber showing some athleticism. Was able to catch and throw it or and step on the bag at the same time. Dyson showing bunt. And takes ball one. Dyson rounded to short in the second inning. He did not play last night. Lorenzo Kane was in center field. And Kane was in the middle of the Royals' victory. Had an RBI triple in the three run sixth inning that really turned the game around. Also made a couple of nice plays in the outfield. One and one. No matter what outfielder Ned goes with, they've all been doing the job. They've got tremendous speed, athleticism, and they can get the job done in the spacious, beautiful ballpark here. But Kluber cuts it off and underhands to Swisher, so the goal there is to get it by the pitcher. And Dyson is the second out. Kluber is really in control of his body and his emotions tonight, watching him pitch. He's not panicking. He didn't panic on that play there. He flipped it over. Looked like Swisher was a little nervous the way he went after the ball, then went back to first base. But Kluber's controlling his emotions very well today. Tonight in a big game for him. He has gotten Alex on a ground out to second base and a fly out to center field. And starts him off with a changeup. Alex, we mentioned earlier, has two career home runs against Kluber, including a grand slam. One ball, one strike. AT&T, our U versus Rewind, takes us back to July 2nd. Think Alex knew it was gone? Yeah, whenever you see his both hands raise above his waist, it tells you he got it. Alex had never hit a grand slam in the big leagues before this year, and now he has two. Hit his first one at Detroit against lefty Darren Downs, and then this one in July. Two and two. So far this year, he leads the team in home runs and RBIs. 20 home runs, 80 ribbies. Tough play for Cabrera, and the throw is offline. Alex diving in head first. Wasn't his best swing, but almost like a swinging bun. It was so well placed. Sure was. Now Cabrera, he's got great hands. And he has the ability with, with his transfer from glove to hand to make these plays. How quick he is. He gets that glove out, or that ball out of the glove. And a little bit off the mark. Nice slide there. Glad to see Alex didn't jam a finger into that base. 
keep the fingers up whenever you go into a base head first. Not straight down because you'll jam them. Alex's first hit tonight, the Royals' fifth. And it brings up Bonifacio, who's been on twice and he has scored twice. Got the corner, strike one. Alex, 10 for 13 steals this year. One hop to Swisher. That'll be his easiest play of the night. And that ends the inning. The Royals are scoreless, but at the end of four, they lead the Indians 3-0. Ball is brought to you by Farmland Foods and their Bacon a Difference charity concert. All tickets are $10 with all proceeds benefiting harvesters. Go to baconadifference.com. 3 nothing Royals to the fifth inning. And the Indians have one hit against Jordano Ventura making his big league debut. They only have three runners as Ventura has walked to. And a hard curveball in for a strike two as Drupal Cabrera. And that's one of the few hard hit balls so far. And he flied out to deep left center field in the second inning. A ball that was run down by Gerard Dyson. He did not go on that swing. One ball, one strike. Tell you what, he, he gets his secondary pitches over for strike one. They're in trouble. And that ball's hard hit. Cabrera is on to lead off the fifth inning. Final game of this series is tomorrow night. Thursday is an off day, and then we hope you'll join us for a special buck night on Friday when the Rangers come to town. So bring your dollar bills as hot dogs, peanuts, and small Pepsi products are just $1. You can order those tickets right now at Royals.com or 1-800-6-ROYALS. Friday night at 710. Third time in five innings that the Indians have had the leadoff man on. But no runners have reached second base. As Ryan Rayburn fouls it away. The Indians have had five base runners. I cheated them one. Ventura committed an error on a throw from Hosmer in the fourth inning. So two walks and error, two singles. Sums up the Indians offense so far. Rayburn grounded to second his first time up. Curveball got away from him. One and one. He 
He's rolled up a couple of double plays already. Still early in the game. He's got a chance to roll another one. Usually breaking balls are the ones. Two and one. That's the pitch the hitter hits the top of the ball with. Three balls, one strike. Rayburn has hit 16 home runs, tying a career high. And that previous career high was with the Tigers. It looked like his career was coming to an end. He had 171 for Detroit last year and 66 games. At one point, was sent to the minor leagues, but he's a, an American League Comeback Player of the Year nominee. He fouls it back to the screen. Three balls, two strikes. The Indians were so happy with his work, they signed him to a two-year contract extension. Yeah, you know what? He, he brings a lot. He's a, he's a good leader in the clubhouse, too, but, you know, he, he's got a strong arm. Not to mention that he came in for a, a, a spot appearance to pitch and threw in the upper 80s. Went one, two, three on him. He's valuable. I think they gave him the two-year deal that next day after he did that. Popped up. Bonifacio to the grass. One out. That last pitch came in at 99 miles an hour for Ventura. He has been up to 102. And he's thrown 42 pitches. 42 of his 63 have been 95 or higher. You can get downloads up to 50 megabits per second with Time Warner Cable Ultimate Internet. Wow, pretty impressive as advertised. Ooh, look at Salvador Perez move back there. Well, he picked that cleanly. There's a lot of catches that would just try the backhand to try to just pick that. Salvi's able to maneuver his body in front of it. Very agile. Strike one and one on Chisholm Hall. He flied to right in the third inning. We've talked about how the veteran pitchers, especially, have really taken care of him in this short time here yesterday and today. And it's evident is he's wearing Jeremy Guthrie's glove. Into right center field. Easy play for David Lowe. Two down. Hey, how about that? Jeremy Guthrie. Can't go wrong with that. It's already broken in. Probably a little bit fancier than the glove he might have had. You never know why he's got it. Looks good. And that glove or a version of that glove has 14 wins this year. Got that right. He's a winner. I was just going to say. And now Jan Gomes. We got the Indians first hit in the third inning. Gomes had been 0 for his last 11. 100 miles an hour for strike one. Down to Moustakis, and it's going to be a foul ball. So it went off of Gomes' foot first. 0 oh and 2. Now, what's going on here? Well, I'm preaching to the Boy, people. you're talking fast. Oh, man. I'm working the people, but look at them work me behind them. Salvador and Guthrie, they're, they're photo bombing me. Right, Bob, but slow it down. They went backwards. <laughs> That's beautiful. I didn't know that was going on. If I'd have known. I might, have, I might have got them in with me, but look at them. They're having fun. How about you with the coordination there, keeping your eye on the camera, flipping the ball, and kind of using your chest as a backboard? Ryan, when it comes to talking about the Royals this time of year, I could talk all day. They didn't have enough time for me. Look at those star players having fun in the background. 
That's beautiful. Look at Guthrie. Crack bat. Shallow left. Alex is there, and that's the inning. So five innings, and the Indians haven't had a runner pass first against Ventura. Try pasta the Panera way. Live consciously, eat deliciously. By Ford, see the new F-150 at your Midwest Ford dealer today. And by ATT UVerse TV. Check availability at 1-800-PICK-ATT. Rethink possible. There you go, there's the FCC mandated at least one shot of a full moon during a televised sporting event. It's beautiful. It's actually a waxing gibbous. According to our television, dire television director, Steve Kurtenbach, who is a lunatic, so he would know. That's right. Hosmer has doubled in a run. He has walked and scored a run. Chisenhall. Good play. I tell you what, that looks like an easy play, but we have seen so many visiting players come into Coffin Stadium and they take a direct route for that ball and they run into the railing where the ball still has more room to the far end of the dugout suite. So he yeah. realized that he had to go around the corner to get to that ball. A lot of guys will run right to the railing and they think they've run out of room and the ball hits the dirt on the far end of the suite. Yeah, that's right. We've seen it. Good awareness. And now a strike to Billy. Billy has walked his 75th walk of the year. That's a new career high for him. And he is grounded out to second base. Off the knuckles and he drops it into right center for a one out hit. Strong, you can do this. Good full swing. When it hits down the handle towards your hands, you don't have a lot of meat to make contact with it, but he fought it out. Kept his bat intact, didn't break it. Slider down and away. Ball one on Sal, who had a sack fly in the third inning, driving in his 71st run. He's also popped to second base.
2 and 0. Oh. Tell you what, Jan Gomes, he's impressed Terry Francona so much that, and you, you got to consider him as an everyday catcher next year. Solid numbers. 290, 10 homers, 34 coming in, 34 ribbies, and throwing out over 40% of the runners. That'll get you a job. And he's a 290 hitter. And when you say things like that about catchers, it's almost as if you, or if I said it, were implying that, well, you just have to live with what he does at the plate because of what he does behind the plate. Well, this guy hits over 290 with 10 home runs. Pretty good package. That's some production. Just inside. Three and one. Pedro Gafal was telling me before the game that Salvador Perez is not afraid of getting jammed. And that's a good trait to have for a young hitter or an old hitter. You, 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 you got to let it fly. Don't worry about those inside pitches. Pedro's been doing a fantastic job since him and George Brett took over several months ago. Three and two. And what we just saw, Emilio Bonifacio, there he is talking to Pedro Grifol. You come to a Royals game and you look into the dugout, you would be hard pressed to find a moment where there is a hitter not talking to Pedro Grifol. And it's not because he's pulling them over to him. The players. Constantly are going to him to talk about approach, scouting report, what Pedro sees from the opposing pitcher that night. And Sal strikes out. So Kluber comes back from three and one, and that's his second strikeout. And now Mike Mustakis, who hit Kluber well before tonight, and has hit him well again tonight. Yes, yeah, so far in two. Of at bats, the moose is loose. And I'm not so sure Terry Francona is going to let Kluber stay in to face him one more time. Big double there. As Francona comes to the mound, and yes, he is going to make a change. So Kluber doesn't get through five. And a Chevy call to the bullpen. And it will be lefty Rich Hill. Who has thrown about three innings in the bullpen tonight? Now he's finally through the gate. He'll face Mustakis. The Royals. Well, we have a night where we salute you, the fans, for all of your loyalty this year. It's fan appreciation night. It's Saturday with the Rangers in town. That's a 6 10 game. You'll enjoy a night of games, giveaways, a live pregame performance by the Zeros at the outfield experience stage, and also the first 10,000 fans receive a Royals blanket, which will come in handy in the fall and winter. 
presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The gates will open at 430 for fan appreciation on Saturday. So Rich Hill. And this was the third time he had warmed up in the bullpen. He comes on with two outs. He'll get Mike Moustakis. And Moustakis gets on for a third time. David Lowe, left hand batter, is on deck. And two batters after that, another left hand hitter. Okay, all the hitters were migrating towards Griffo, like you talked about earlier. And they know that he's got a big curve. He tried to sneak a piece of cheese by him right there. That's 88 to 93 on his fastball is Richard Hill. Big curve. And he's got an occasional change up. He'll use to righties. Moose is on the ball tonight. Going to be tough to sneak a piece of cheese by him. That's the curve. And it's one and two. Okay, that was elevated. He had a chance on that one. Hill threw a great curveball to Mustakis last night, and Hill came on same situation to face Mustakis with two down, and then later in the at bat, Mustakis singled to center and drove in a run. In the air and a shallow right field. A long run in for Rayburn, but he'll catch up to it and end the inning. We've played five. Royals lead 3 nothing. Six hits and the pitching of Giordano Ventura. has gone final against New York, so Royals win. They'd be a game ahead of the Yankees. Baltimore and Boston tied up. Texas over Tampa, 6-1. to one. Our Mazda game break takes us to Allentown, Pennsylvania, the AAA National Championship, and that right there, the Omaha Storm Chasers, Irving Falou with the RBI. And really the big story, guys, in this game is that Chris Dwyer, Escobar makes the first out there, Chris Dwyer was perfect in this game finally gave a hit in the seventh so seven innings he has done with one hit allowed no walks and eight strikeouts out dueling his former teammate jake odorizzi and speaking of former omaha storm chasers Jordano ventura in control here i want to add to what hud was talking about before sitting next to Irvin santana last night and i asked Irvin, how much are you talking to this kid and he said i'm talking to him a lot and i just told him be yourself go out there have confidence, listen to Salvador, but shake him if you need to, if you feel really good about a pitch, and just go out there and relax and have fun. And he has obviously been able to do that. He's still going to fall short on that one. So good guy to get advice from because Urban Santana was once that young Dominican pitcher coming up from the minor leagues. And so far, 
so good for the young Jordano Ventura. All right, thanks, Joel. This will be ruled a base hit. That ball came up on Bonifacio. It hit the grass where it meets the dirt, so he didn't get a, a true hop, and that was enough for the score to give Swisher a single. Swisher will take it because he hasn't been able to do very much at all against the Royals in 15 games coming into this game. Just hitting 176 with one ribby. So even though Swisher was red hot coming into this series, the Royals have his number. They've been shutting him down. Now third time to the order for the Indians. One and one on Kipnis. Fouled it off of his foot one and two Kipnis. Was the first ever strikeout victim of Ventura. Got him with a curveball in the first inning and then Kipnis grounded out to second in the fourth. Might have been the best curveball we've seen tonight. It was a beauty. Started out about knee high and ended up ankle high. Still one and two. Got the call. Kipnis isn't very happy about it. But a fastball with some cutting motion hit the inside. Kipnis strikes out for a second time, and that's Ventura's third. Yep, there was some people out there saying, why Ventura? And whenever they asked me, I just said, why not? He's got big league stuff. Turn him loose. So far, so good. Signed by the Royals in 2008 out of the Dominican Republic when he was 17 years old and he weighed 140 pounds. So he doesn't look very big right now. We mentioned he is under six feet. He's listed at 5'11 and 180. So that means he's even that small frame he has now. He was 40 pounds lighter. But he had the arm. One and one on Santana. Now, that wasn't your average fastball that you had to reach way up and out on that. Salvi caught it like a cat, would catch a bird, went right, I mean, just stuck his glove out there like nothing to it. That's 99. That's that's very real, very little reaction time. To right field and sinking and low. Traps it so he keeps it from skipping by him. And Swisher going on contact to go first to third is Santana's on for the third time. That's his first hit. And that's the first time all night an Indians runner has advanced past first base. Okay, outfielders, sometimes you have to wait a split second or two before you make up your mind. And Santana's got some good power, so he hit it off the end of the bat. Lo didn't get the kind of jump he wanted, but he's smart enough to keep the ball in front of him. He turned his glove up. He doesn't want to get by him. There. Two outs. He's going to rely on Ventura to do the job here. Dave Island told me before the game he wasn't going to go out to talk to Ventura unless he could help him. So a little bit of a confidence meeting right here. As there's some action getting going. Going to get a couple of guys up. Will Smith. And Lewis Coleman. So the first inning where the Indians have had more than one runner. And Ventura has really beaten up Michael Brantley's bat tonight or bats plural. Got a broken bat ground ball back to the mound in the second inning which Ventura turned into a double play. And then a shattered bat, a bat broken in half, ground ball to second in the fourth. Ventura's really pitched him well in.
2 0. Just foul, two and one. I've heard pitchers say when they got to the big leagues, a couple of things stood out for them. Obviously, the quality of hitters at this level, but beyond that, the strike zone's tighter here than it was in the minor leagues. And Ventura, if he pits a game like this in the minor leagues, his opponent would probably be emotionally beaten by now, and they would just be going through the motions. But at the big league level, that doesn't happen. You still got big league hitters up there. It doesn't matter if Brantley's bat has been shattered twice. He's still looking for a pitch to drive. He is. And like I mentioned earlier, he's one of their most productive hitters at 349 with runners in scoring position. And now the crowd trying to get behind Ventura. Try and give him a little extra to get through this sixth inning. Two and two. Off the breaking ball now, full count. With one out, Swisher reached on an infield single. With two outs, Santana single to right. Almost everybody here is standing. And a line drive base hit into right field, so the Indians are on the board. Santana was running, so he'll go first to third. And Brantley makes it a 3 1 game. Okay, three and two. Hitter knows what's coming. And now, Ned Yost knows what's coming. Ventura doesn't know what's coming, but we do. He's going to get a huge ovation. As soon as he leaves the mound. And yeah. well deserved. Salvers is telling him, when you walk off the field, tip your hat to the crowd. He just told him that. And he's a good listener at that too. <laughs> That's beautiful. year but a, a call up when the Royals needed him and he delivered allowing one run so far in five and two thirds innings Chevy called to the bullpen and it's Will Smith to face as Drupal Cabrera with runners at first and third and two down so he gives up 
five hits. A run so far. He's responsible for the two runners. Two walks. None since the second inning. Three strikeouts and he got a couple of double plays. And now it's 2-0 and on Cabrera. Yeah. Tremendous job by the youngster. There's a lot on the line for him. Just be making your major league start. I don't care if it's anywhere, anytime during the season. That's always a challenge for a young guy. But in a huge, meaningful September game like this one. Wow. Fantastic job. And now 3 0. And this could very well be only the only hitter that Will Smith faces. It's Ryan Rayburn. A right hand batter with power is on deck, and Lewis Coleman is ready to go in the bullpen. Yep. Anyone and everyone in that Royals bullpen is available tonight. When you're playing one game playoffs for the rest of the way for the season, Johnny Allstaff comes into play. Use them all. Got the call. And Cabrera tried to con the home plate umpire by twisting away. Three and one. A little body language. Will Smith, good breaking ball. He's got a couple of different sliders. Slider, curveball, fastball, change up. A walk, and they're loaded up. Ned Yost goes to the steps right away. So it was just a one batter matchup for Will Smith. And now things are getting a little sticky for the Royals in the sixth inning. As Lewis Coleman will come on with the bases loaded and two down. Final game of the series with the Indians is tomorrow. It's our final Gordo Nation. A $30 ticket includes a limited edition Gordo Nation t shirt and a seat in the field box or plaza sections in left field. So that's tomorrow night, 7 10 with the Indians. Get your tickets at royals.com slash Gordo Nation. Coleman, and he got Rainburn to chase 0 and 1. So Lewis Coleman comes on with no room for error. He inherits three runners. Two belong to Ventura. One to Smith. And he just has to get Ryan Rayburn. Who has 16 home runs this year. And he's four for seven with him loaded up this year. So he's had some pretty good numbers. Hard sliders. Sinkers spot him on the outside corner. One ball one strike. One for four in the past against Coleman, and Lewis has struck him out twice. 
Hank Lewis Coleman has moved up on the depth chart this year. Sure has. Foul. It's because he's dealt performance based business. You want higher leverage roles in the bullpen, you come in and get guys out. Fans are going to try to help him here. Big pitch coming. Crowd has been into it since the first pitch. They have been in and out of their seats all night. And now Coleman's 1 2. Blocked by Sal. Two balls, two strikes. Okay, Salvador Perez, I tell you, pitchers, they can relax and throw anything they want to try to fool the batter, especially down low in the dirt when you got that guy. Three and two. I'll tell you those last two pitches. Most right-hand batters would chase them. I think that's right where Sal and Coleman wanted it, but Rayburn has been able to lay off them. Games like this, before games in their hitters meetings, they go over not just a starting pitcher, but every guy in their bullpen. Get an idea he's going to try to get a strikeout off the plate. Now he's got to trust his stuff. Good time for a meeting. When in doubt, talk it out. Coleman looked a little bit unsure about what he wanted to call, so they go out there and make sure he executes a low strike here. Make him put the ball in play. Don't want to give him a free ride. Ventura allowed the first run. Brantley singling in Swisher. He's responsible for Santana at third. Brantley at second, Will Smith responsible for Cabrera at first. The runners go, swung on and missed, and Coleman gets the job done. Lewis Coleman with the game on the line, even though it was the sixth inning, comes on with the bases loaded, two down, and strikes out Ryan Rayburn, and the Royals lead 3 1 as they come up in the bottom of the sixth. Our Sonic Slam inning, our contestant is James Stokes from Kearney, Missouri, and if the Royals hit a home run in this inning, James wins $900. If the Royals hit a grand slam out of the park, James wins 25 grand from Sonic and the Royals. So Rich Hill came on in the fifth, a left-hander, and now Ned Yost is going to bring out his right-hand bats, 
And Lorenzo Kane batting for David Lowe. And now Terry Francona will answer with another move. Yep, bullpens are deep. Got all kinds of arms out there, mix and match. They take their chances. This guy coming in here, he's pretty good, Brian Schaub. So it'll be Kane, Escobar, and Dyson coming up in the bottom of the sixth. Royals lead 3 1. And moves, counter moves, and moves against the counter moves. Ryan Shaw comes on after Lorenzo Cain was announced as a pinch hitter for David Lowe. Yep, this guy's a tough competitor. The league's only hitting 224 off him. He's got hard cutters, power slider. 0 oh 1 on Lorenzo. They go 90 to 96. He's got a great cut fastball I mentioned. And also working a, a little curveball. But he comes at you with hard stuff. And it's 0 2. Lorenzo was one for five last night. That one hit was big. RBI triple. In the Royals three run sixth inning. Royals scored three in the sixth and two in the seventh. One ball two strikes that turned a 2 1 game into a 7 1 game. Yeah I talked to him before the game before he got the batting practice and I said Lorenzo man that, that's the first ball since you've come back from your injury that you've really powdered. He goes yeah you know HUD, it was a it was a, a the right time and I felt it. I knew I had to get to third base on that especially after Salvador Perez hit one before me I couldn't bear to hear my teammates if I didn't try for three on that and he said it's all fun I had a great time competing and when you hear a player to tell you that in games like this that's a good sign he's having fun he's enjoying it the crowd here tonight has been a big boost to the Royals playoff atmosphere you're able to play loose you're better Swisher makes the play. Kane is out number one. Well, we got a glimpse of the future tonight with Jordano Ventura making his major league debut. Minor league award winners, including Omaha Player of the Year Christian Colon and Pitcher of the Year Chris Dwyer. And Royals first round draft pick Hunter Dozier will be here for Futures Night before the game on Friday. That's a game with the Rangers. So come early for a pregame autograph session open to all fans on the left field concourse. That'll be inside gate A, left field concourse, inside gate A from 530 to 615. Get your tickets at Royals.com or 
Call 1-800-6-ROYALS Friday night. And, folks, you're going to be seeing those future stars here as close as next year. Go out and introduce yourself to them and welcome them. Joel reported earlier that Chris Dwyer really pitched well for Triple-A Omaha tonight. They're in the Triple-A championship game. The champion of the Pacific Coast League, which is the Royals, and the champion from the International League, which was Durham, the Triple-A team of the Rays. And now Omaha is just one out away from the championship. One and two on Escobar. Tell you what, Mike Jersley, manager there in Omaha, has done a fantastic job, especially with this time of year when all your you lose most of your good players to the big league team. Talks a lot about their depth and his managing skills. And winning in the minor leagues means a lot to the Royals. Dave Moore and his staff. Every general manager will say it is important to win in the minor leagues. They don't really mean it. Brian Polberg, Double A manager this year, and. Because the Royals were in this position, they had to call up some of those guys from AAA. But in years past, they have left September call-ups with AAA for a chance to advance into the playoffs. They want those guys to win in the minor leagues and win together. That's what it's all about up here. So if you win down there, you're used to it. You come up here, you play winning-style baseball, Royals baseball. Kipnis throws out Escobar. He's 0 for 3. Brian Shaw out of Long Beach State. They've produced some players, haven't they? Long Beach State. Troy Tulowitzki. Evan Longoria. Jared Weaver. Came over in a trade with Arizona. He was Arizona's second round pick in 08. He's good. I like how he comes out throwing strikes. He's firm. He, he's got a couple of pitches that break away from righties and, and into lefties. He's got a changeup he'll use too against lefties. But that, that's some good sinking action away from their bat. Very reliable. Two and zero on Dyson, who's grounded out twice. And one of those on a bunt attempt. Royal scored one in the first on Hosmer's double, two in the third on a Perez sack fly and a Mustakis double. The Indians got their first run in the top half of this inning. Two and one. Giordano Ventura went five and two thirds in his big league debut, gave up one run, five hits. That is over Chisholm Hall, and that would be a base hit, even if Cabrera was able to grab it with his bare hand. Okay, this is beautiful. You could see Dyson do that. If Ned saw that every time up, he would just love to rod Dyson. Doesn't have to be pretty when you get your hits. That's game changing speed that Gerard Dyson has. So Alex. Championship game. Zach Jackson with a strikeout to end it and congratulations to Mike Jersherly. And the Omaha Storm Chasers, they are the 2013 AAA National Champions. Oh, what a beautiful thing. Just win. That's what professional baseball is all about. I don't care what level. <laughs> what is that, a Brazilian flag? <laughs> that Paulo Orlando? <laughs> Congratulations, Storm Chasers. It's That's beautiful great. to see that. 
It's so hard to win. Oh, what a grind that was. That's just a perfect example of, you know, you get hot at the right time. And the Storm Chasers finished the regular season below 500, but it earned them a spot in the playoffs. And they won the PCL. They got hot at the right time. Now they win the AAA championship. That's what you were talking about in regard to the Royals earlier. It's get through that first game in that new wild card format, which began last year, and now you get into a short series. And if the Royals have their pitching lined up right, you never know. Ryan, if that happens, the Royals are a very, very dangerous team if they can get pass the wild card just what is we're dreaming ahead and they go head up with another team oh man that other team does not want to face the Royals too many weapons they got too many good things going best bullpen in the league and the best ERA overall pitching staff starters defense Ooh, running game the only thing they're missing is power and in postseason good pitching nullifies power so you got ways to score runs Dangerous. So Zepchinski to face Gordon. Alex has Dyson at first, two down. And that's ball one. And that's what he'll see from Zepchinski. Steady diet of breaking balls away from him. He's got a sinker that he'll use. He'll try to sink it. They come into Gordon, and his big breaking ball goes away. One and one. Just a final note on Omaha. They were 70 and 74 during the regular season and seven and one in the playoffs. Can you believe that? <laughs> there you go. It's the hot team at the end that wins it. Fantastic. One and two. Okay, he's going to stay with that breaking ball. Dyson with two outs, staying home. Dyson's with 31 stolen bases on the year. Been caught six times. Pronounced just as it looks. Dyson runs, and it's in the dirt. So Dyson has a stolen base. His 32nd, and the Royals have swiped two tonight. Okay, excellent job picking a breaking ball to run on. You want a high percentage of stolen bases, you'll get it when you run on a breaking ball. There was a little delayed steal there. Do you see that? Dyson trying to take a page from Bonifacio. Dyson still jumping around at second base as Alex lays off the pitch down and in three and two. Alex Gordon hitting just over 300 with runner in scoring position. It'd be a huge pickup right there if he could somehow find a way. Michael Bourne, the center fielder, has six outfield assists. Brantley with 11 and left. And right field, Ravens got three. And we'll do it again. Zepchinski started the year with St. Louis. He did not pitch well at all in 11 games. His ERA was almost eight, but he has pitched very well for the Indians. And Alex comes back and walks. And what will Terry Francona do now? He's got a switch hitter. He's going to take his chances with the veteran left hand. Facio does something here, then he's got the lefty Zepchinski for Eric Hosmer. That's right. He'll take his chances with two outs. Well, 
Bonifacio walked and scored in the first inning, singled and scored in the third. Kipnis. He will play it to first to end the inning. So the Royals strand two, and at the end of six, the Royals lead the Indians 3 1. Brings him in in a real tough situation. Might be the pitch of the game. Struck out Rayburn, three and two count. The young kid, Ventura, loved it. So did Ned. Keeps on thriving. Lewis Coleman doing the job. So he's out, and Herrera is on for the seventh inning to face Chisenhall, Gomes, and Horn. And. Herrera hasn't pitched in a week. His last outing was a week ago at Cleveland. Tim Collins pitched in the game last night. He had had a long layoff, but wasn't bothered by that. He faced three, retired three with a couple of strikeouts. Chisholm Hall flied to right twice against Ventura. Yeah, Brian, you know what? You could throw all those things out, even though they're important, especially like a hitter. If he doesn't hit in a week and comes up, his timing's not going to be right. Same way with a pitcher. But you got to throw all that out in meaningful games. You go out and execute. I don't care if you haven't pitched in a month. Got to throw strikes and keep the ball down. He's got plenty of good stuff to do it. We got two right down the middle, and there's some 100 for you, too. Tremendous arms Ned Yost has in the pin. That changeup, too. Goes 89 miles an hour. Very good difference in the velocities there. Change of speeds. Also has a breaking ball he'll mix in. Change up. 90 miles an hour. That was a million dollar pitch. So a good start for Herrera. So the early returns are that he hasn't been bothered by the layoff. That's what I'm saying. Just get the job done. Get her done. Just like Lewis Coleman came in there and did his thing. Herrera. Three pitches not messing around. And now Herrera gets Gomes. Who has good power to the opposite field, and the Royals adjust that way as they shift over to the right. One hundred miles an hour. They just put up on Crown Vision now that we know that Omaha has won. And Rookie League Idaho Falls is also in a championship series, and they lead 3 0 in the bottom of the fourth. And that's a pitch that got away from Herrera. 
just 80 miles an hour, but he plunks Gomes with one out. Yeah, it's a good thing it was a changeup. 100 mile an hour rib ball wouldn't work, wouldn't feel too good, Doc. You sure about that, Doc? He did. He <laughs> took one for the team. Didn't. And now Bourne is fooled 0 and 1. Bourne has walked, grounded to first on a great play by Hosmer in the third, and popped to short on a good play by Escobar running into the outfield. And that's cranked into deep right center field. Kane in pursuit, but it's by him. Up against the wall, Gomes is going to be waved home. Bourne is on his way to third. It's a one-run game, and the Indians have the tying run at third base with only one out. Okay, there was a guy there, Michael Bourne, sitting on a fastball, and he got the head out. On contact, that was trouble. Salvi, he's sitting down the middle. That ball started in, but it ended up out over the middle of the plate, short, compact swing. Let's the 100 mile an hour fastball supply the power. Now, hindsight being what it is, HUD, but Bourne was fooled by a changeup. And when you're fooled by a changeup, doesn't that suggest that you're you're guessing fastball and you're triggering early? Absolutely, you're looking dead red. That's what you have to do against a hard thrower like this. And then they came back with a fastball. Sometimes. Just, sometimes you wonder if, yeah. if he's fooled by a pitch the first time, you just stay with it. I'm going to tell you, 100 miles an hour, that's a pretty good pitch. Sometimes you're going to take your chances with it. Okay. 2 0. Oh. Well, as I said, hindsight being what it is. Infield in for the Royals. Swisher is one for three. And he's ahead in the count three and zero. Oh. Jason Kipnis is on deck. Ned Yost. He's watching. He's got another arm up in there in the bullpen. Swinging 3 0, oh, and this will tie the game. Mm. So, with one out, a hit batter, a triple, and a sack fly. And the Indians have scored all three of the runs in the last two innings, and that means that Giordano Ventura will not win his major league debut. So Kipnis with two outs, nobody on. Royals have really pitched him well. And we spent some time talking about him last night, one of the best hitters in the division, which you hear very little about. But he is 0 for 7 in this series with five strikeouts. And now two balls and no strikes as Herrera's in trouble again. Now two and one. Yes, better location. Make the hitter lift it when it's down there. Three and one. Carlos Santana with a 12 game hitting streak and 18 home runs is on deck. And Ned Yost has Wade Davis ready in the bullpen. Stroke to right field, but Kane is there. 
The inning is over, but it's a new game. Stretch time at Coffin Stadium, a 3-3 tie. on new Ford cars and trucks, visit thoroughbredford.com. Well, we've got a good game. 3-3 tie, bottom of the seventh inning, our Vatterett College game summary. And the Royals did the scoring early. Hosmer drove in a run in the first. Perez and Moustakis in the third. And the Indians with one in the sixth, two in the seventh. Only one of those runs against Giordano Ventura, who gave up just one run in five and two thirds innings in his big league debut which will end up a no decision. So Hosmer with the double a walk and a foul out he has driven in a run and scored a run facing Zepchinski who is ahead 0 and 2. Yeah Zepchinski he's pretty sneaky he's, he's got a, that sinker that runs into the lefties and that breaking ball is moving away from him. Hosmer a 323 hitter with against left handers with five homers. He hasn't swung at a pitch like that for a long time, and Gomes will throw him out. And now we'll see if Zepchinski sticks around as Billy Butler is scheduled to come up. I think he's going to come get him. So Terry Francona, he knows his way from the third base dugout to the mound tonight. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he loves that bubble gum, too. And it'll be Cody Allen on to face Billy Butler when we come back.
One out, nobody on. All right, scoreboard watching. The good news, Toronto has defeated New York. That's a team that was in front of the Royals. Bad news, Baltimore, another team in front of the Royals in the wild card. They won as Matt Wieters drove in a run late. And earlier in that game, Chris Davis hit his 51st home run of the year. That was against Ryan Dempster. So I'm not going to throw him any kind of breaking ball ankle high. He's a great low ball hitter. See how he lifted that? Looked like he had a nine iron. I'm going to go hard, high fastballs on that guy. Man. He's a beast. And then the other score was Texas beating Tampa Bay 7-1. Texas had lost seven in a row. Brantley makes the play on Billy. Billy's one for three. Two outs in the bottom of the seventh. Couldn't quite get that on the barrel. Cody Allen, 95 mile an hour fastball power curve. Sal with a sack fly in the third inning, drove in his 71st run. Seventy one RBIs this year and twenty five of those have come in the last month. One and one. You know in Salvi didn't he miss 13 games. His, grandma His grandmother passed, passed away. Yeah. About that much. It was that more month. than the allotted time for the bereavement list. Goes the other way and drops it into right field for a two out hit. And as you were saying earlier, Pedro Grifol told you that Salvador Perez is not afraid of getting jammed. No. And you know, he learned that from Miguel Cabrera. You know, Miguel Cabrera. Talked with Salvi and he said, you know what, I, I could care less if they get in my kitchen. I'm going to swing anyway and, and I'm going to catch them. Sometimes they get me, sometimes I get them. Because some hitters would get anxious with a pitch in on them like that and they would try and muscle up and pull it. Afraid of getting jammed and break their bat. And with that kind of a swing, he's kind of going with it. Yeah, Salvi's got such great hands that, you know, he, he's dangerous anywhere. He's loves to stay inside the ball and shoot the ball to right. But now it's up to Moose here to see if he can get a pitch. One and one. The way he's swinging the bat tonight. One mistake to give him the lead again. And using the whole field. Against Kluber. Ustakis double to right center field in the second. And then in the third, double to left center field and drove in a run. Last home run, September 5th for Moose. One ball, two strikes. And that wasn't just any home run. That was a walk-off home run on September 5th. 13-inning victory against Seattle right here at Kauffman Stadium. Gets the strikeout to end the inning. Ooh, that was nasty. So at the end of seven, still a 3-3 tie.
The last two innings to tie the game. All right, our AT&T trivia question for tonight. Who are the only three players to win a batting title, a regular season MVP, and a World Series MVP? There's the Al Broughton we know. Wow. A trivia question with some teeth. Ooh, man. Three players, a batting title, a regular season MVP, and a World Series MVP. And for clarification, the same year or winning those awards different years? Okay, over the span of a career that they have won. Three guys have won all three of those awards. Here's Wade Davis in the eighth. Ventura, in his big league debut, gave up one run in five and two-thirds. Will Smith faced a batter. Lewis Coleman faced a batter. That helped get Ventura out of the sixth inning. And then the Indians scored two against Herrera in the seventh. Davis working his magic down in the zone. Breaking ball like that. He's got a nice fastball. He'll rush that sucker up there around 97, 98 miles an hour. He's got a lot in his tank. Throws a cutter. Two and one. He's got a change up he'll use. Santana has singled. He's reached on an air. And he has walked. Wade Davis pitched a scoreless inning last night. Two strikeouts and a walk. He did not face Santana. And a leadoff walk. Santana walks for the second time tonight and for the 87th time this year. Curveball. Not even my challenge in there. He's got some pop. Well, we hope you'll join player ambassadors Alcides Escobar and Luis Mendoza for the Baseball Tomorrow Fund baseball equipment drive prior to the Royals game tomorrow night. Volunteers will be outside the Kia Diamond Club to accept your new and gently used baseball and softball equipment along with cash donations. Items collected will support the baseball program at Cristo Rey in Kansas City. So Drew Stubbs, much better speed at first base. As Terry Francona is going to go for it here in the eighth inning. And Brantley fouls the first pitch away. Remember when the Royals won that exciting game on Saturday, Prince Fielder. Led off the ninth inning, getting on base. Jim Leland decided not to run for him, and that was a call that was questioned quite a bit after the game. And not just because Prince Fielder was thrown out at the plate, but because with the leadoff man on and a chance to win the game right there. Now, this is different. The Indians can take the lead, but in that game, they could win it. Or no, tie the game, excuse me. Tie the game in the ninth inning. But still, Terry Francona, he's going to take his DH out not quite the hitter that Prince Fielder is but he's an important hitter to the Indians and he will go with a pinch runner grounded to Hosmer and no chance for a force at second base the Royals do get the out at first as Brantley is out and Stubbs moves up to second base tough in between hop he was more conscious of staying in front of it not letting it get by him which was a smart play Especially with nobody out right there. You got to stay in front. You never know what can happen. The ball hit the lip. He stayed with it. And he's able to get the out. Never so what do you think? Run in a situation like this or? You mean, you mean will he try to? Well, I mean, I just, I mean, generally speaking, DH gets on or a guy who doesn't run well late in the game. In this case, a tie game in the game on Saturday in Detroit. 
Tigers were down by one. Yeah. No, he he's going for it right here. Francona is. He's trusting these hitters that are coming up here. They're going to put the ball in play, and they're going to make something happen. Thought he might attempt to steal there to get to in the second base, but whenever you pinch run this time of game in a game of this magnitude, you want to get that guy in his scoring position. Whether you steal him or you get a hit over there or what, he's right where he wants him to be. Two and zero on Cabrera. A Struble. He's a buck eighty-five hitter with a runner in scoring position this year. Stroke to left field. Alex is back, and it's over his glove. That ball carried on him. And Cabrera's into second base to give the Indians the lead. Looked like Alex had it all the way from up here. And at the last moment, he ran and jumped at the same time and couldn't grab it. Yeah, that ball was hit a little bit harder and further than Gordon thought. Let's see, it just went off to the left of his glove, the side of his glove. So he had it, just couldn't line it up the way he wanted to. You don't see that very often. Matter of fact, I've never seen that from him on a play like that. That's the toughest play, though, for a left fielder. I would agree with you. A left hand batter hitting a line drive that's slicing. Right at the left fielder. It's you know, almost directly over his head. One and one on Rayburn. He makes it look so easy. All the time. You know, there's been a couple of balls tonight that seem to have a little giddy up at the very end. I remember a play that Dyson made very early in the game. Rayburn did swing on appeal to first base umpire Adrian Johnson. One ball, two strikes. Dyson in the second inning, and it was a ball hit by Cabrera. Remember, he hit one that looked like it was going to be medium deep left center field, and the next thing you knew, Dyson was on the middle of the warning track in a full sprint. So there is a, a breeze blowing from the right field foul pole out to left field. That's helping the carry. Two and two. Rayburn, he looks middle in. He wants to turn and burn. Keep the ball away from him. And grounds it to Escobar, who will play it to third. And Cabrera is out. Thank you very much. Yeah, and you know, shortstop's eyes light up whenever they see that. Less than two outs, the runner trying to sneak over there to third base on a ball that he should not have advanced on. Okay, he thought maybe Escobar wasn't going to take the attempt, but he got him by plenty. Going to give you an out right there, take it. Good heads up play. And now another pinch runner, Matt Carson, will run for Rayburn. He's two for two this season in steals. Wade Davis has quick feet, pretty good move. Down and in ball one on Chisenhall. He has two flyouts to right and a strikeout.
Two hops to Bonifacio, and he dropped it. Oops. That won't help. Hmm. Gonna have to somehow find a way to gather some momentum back. Waited back on the big hop, had plenty of time, and just got a little careless with the transfer from glove to hand. And that's how easy it can happen. And now the former Royal Mike Avilas will run for Chisholm Hall. Fans will ask sometimes, what's the difference between a physical error and a mental error? And that might have been more of a mental error in that, as you pointed out, HUD, he had more time. He really didn't have to rush the play like he did. There is a physical error of not making the transfer, which he's probably done 10,000 times in his life without a problem, but rushing a play that didn't appear that needed to be rushed. Yeah, and you, you just can't give the Cleveland Indians an ex any extra outs, especially after the heads-up play that Cabrera made to get a Strubel Cabrera at third trying to advance. Just missed. One and one on Jan Gomes. Well, according to the grid, it just missed. But that's a good pitch there. What he wants. Stay on the edges. One and two. Royals had a 3 nothing lead at the end of three. They have not scored since. And now the Indians have scored in three straight innings. One in the sixth, two in the seventh to tie it, and now a run in the eighth to take the lead. And an inning which has included a leadoff walk and an error. Swing. Okay, that, that looked pretty good. Looked like he checked his swing. Trying to go upstairs with the four seam fastball to see if he finishes him off with a breaker. Again, close. Three and two. And now the added advantage with the runners going. Lewis Coleman executed in a similar situation, except the bases were full. But it was a 3 2 count. He threw a slider that worked. Davis has got to come up with one here. Rounded back to Davis. Kept that ball off of his face, and he made the play to end the inning. So, a leadoff walk. Terry Francona uses three pinch runners, and one of them comes around to score to give the Indians the lead for the first time. Watch out. All right, get some runs.
you by Ram Trucks. So the Royals trail for the first time in the series. They have six outs to go on offense. Baseball season isn't over yet, so don't forget to pick up the latest Royals gear at Rally House. Changes for Cleveland. Matt Carson, he ran for Rayburn in the eighth, so he stays in and right. Mike Avilas ran for Chisholm Hall in the inning, and he stays in at third. And on the mound is Joe Smith. He's the sixth Indians pitcher tonight. Set to face Kane, Escobar, and Dyson. Sinker slider. That's those are his two pitches. And he's good with them. Got some deception because he comes sidearm. Makes that slider really hard to stay in. Keep that shoulder tucked in on. One and one on Kane. Who was batted once. David Lowe. Started in right field and then Kane batted for him in the six when the Indians brought on a left hander. One and two. Joe Smith, he of the rubber arm, making his 64th appearance. That leads the Indians. He has made as many as 82 appearances in one season. Yeah. Less stress when you throw down like that. Oh, man. That's beautiful. Okay, when you see that ball starting at you, it's going to come back inside, right on the inside part of the plane. Because you can't give up on it. Perfect control. Belton Colbert, home plate umpire, gave him that one. Escobar is 0 for 3. So he has a 10 game hitting streak on the line. 0 and 1. Offensives, they're going to have to make something happen. Just inside, one ball, one strike. And one hop to Smith. And he throws to first like he throws to the plate. Two down. Left-hand batter Gerard Dyson, who has an infield single and a stolen base, his 32nd of the year, adding to his career high. Now a lot of pitchers like this, you can understand why they would be tough on righties, but sometimes they really give a left-hand hitter a long look. But Smith kind of works against that trend in that he's even better against lefties than he is against righties. Yeah, he, he's, he's able to nibble on the corners. The sinker goes away from the lefty. He's got that hard slider coming in, but he's really good with his location. He don't miss too much over the middle of the plate. He's a lot like Lewis Coleman. Same kind of pitcher, except this kid, Joe Smith, he has a little bit lower arm angle. Bunted. And Avilas decides to pick it up. And Dyson is safe. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, Venus was ready for it. And he was in on the, the play. So he's saying that I can do this. And he wasn't exactly ready for it. He was not even on the grass. I thought he was at least on the grass when he started. But this ball was going to move foul. And you want to take a chance of letting it go on a, a runner like that, especially. That was a nice play. But you're taking a chance, and maybe that's the chance they need. Well, maybe that's why he fielded the ball and threw to first. 
I don't know why you would hesitate and look back on a bunt play like that. Anyway, it's fortunate that Dyson was able to get in there. On a play that really he could have let go foul and still be hit. Well, you and I looked at one another when Avila's threw and thought, why would you make that play? But can he see that as a third baseman as he's coming in that Dyson's not going 100%? No. Okay. Center field. And not quite enough. And Bourne makes a play to end the inning. So we go to the ninth. Cleveland leads 4-3. Second straight game, and he was dynamite again last night. Came on in the eighth inning. Face four, struck out three. And over his last two appearances against the Indians, he's faced nine and struck out eight. Yeah, pretty impressive the stuff that Hojaver has been showing out of the bullpen. Continues to impress. Okay, the seventh inning was a tough inning. As Michael Bourne was able to square up Kelvin Herrera's fastball, he split the gap. There was no chance that you were going to make a play at the plate or on Bourne. Big, big hit there for the try. Showing bun and taking a strike. Good hard fastballs, 95. Cutters, curveballs. And there's the curve that he'll mix in every now and then. Just to put that thought in the back of the hitter's mind. And Ho Chavers ahead, one and two. Ventura went five and two thirds, gave up one run, and he was in line to win. Until the Indians tied the game in the seventh inning. Will Smith faced one batter in the sixth. Lewis Coleman one batter to get the final out of the sixth. And that was a strikeout with the bases loaded. And then the Indians scored two in the seventh against Herrera. And one in the eighth against Davis. Still one and two on Bourne. Yep, 76 strikeouts and 65 and two thirds innings coming in for Hoji. 164 average to his opponents. 
He's been as dominant as you can get. Got to hold him here. You got to have any kind of chance. Stroke to right field. And Michael Bourne has hit a home run. His sixth of the year. So in his last two at bats, he has tripled. And now he's gone deep. And the Indians lead 5 3 in the ninth inning. He is feeling a lot better on many different levels than he did last night. Yep, that's what baseball can do. It can change drastically from one night to the next. And there it was a fastball that was belt high. Born again, he was on top of the. We just showed you in the seventh inning that triple he hit with a short, quick swing. And he's hot, he's got it going, and he knew that was out. Boy, look at the leverage on the, from that front side there. He had a little bit of lift, and that's a beautiful swing. Coach provided the power with the velocity on that fastball. And now Swisher, who has driven in a run and scored a run. First time that Hochaver's given up a run since August the 22nd, and that was also the last time he gave up a home run. Mm. Only allowed two home runs now in the last two months. One and two on Swisher. It's very, very consistent with his work, and you know it's going to happen. You you mislocate one pitch at a certain time and. They can get you. It's got to let that go. He's still got to get three outs. Cleveland has scored in four straight innings as Hochaver gets the first out of the ninth inning. And that's not something that Royals fans are used to seeing out of their bullpen. And you know, a lot of talk before the game was so much focused on the young Ventura. That really we you knew he wasn't going to go real deep into the game. But the emphasis was going to be on the back end of the bullpen, but you never expected them to give up runs, especially Herrera gave up two. Curveball is low to Kipnis, who is hitless in the series with five strikeouts. Royals had a 3 nothing lead at the end of three and had all the momentum on their side and that momentum really carried through six innings even though Cleveland got a run in the sixth Lewis Coleman getting the Royals out of the sixth inning with a strikeout with the bases loaded and then Cleveland with two in the seventh to tie and now runs in the eighth and in the ninth and leading by two. Three balls, one strike. Full count. He's challenging Kipnis. Most would expect the same thing coming right here. Throws a three run, he's gonna throw a three two. He's gonna come in right back with it. Mm. And now he walks. And now a pinch hitter, Jason Giambi, is gonna bat for Drew Stubbs. Stubbs ran for Santana in the eighth inning. Giambi has a pinch hitter this year is two for 11 off of Terry Francona's bench. Both of those hits 
were home runs. So he's looking for one thing a fastball that he can handle. Early in the count, and just missed it. And to be 42 and to be able to get around on a 96 mile an hour fastball tells me he's got something left. He's not done. He wants to stay in. I'm sure that there'll be a few offers for him out there next year. Browns to Hosmer. They'll get the out at second base and back at first. 3 6 3 to end the inning. Royals down to their last three outs and down by two to the Indians. Getting ready for Chris Perez. They owe him. Would be, would be beautiful. Associate producer Al Broughton took us to our knees tonight with his trivia question. Sure did. Yeah, we, we popped off a little bit last night. We did, but you know what? We got one, for, uh, two for sure. We can't find the third one. Frank Robinson, Roberto Clemente. Let's see, a regular season MVP, a World Series MVP, and a batting title. Give us an era. For the last player, 60s, 70s, early 80s. Kirby Puckett can't be him. <laughs> no, Kirby I don't know why he, why he came in my mind. Kirby, got, Kirby did have a good year in 69. All right. Pete Rose. All right, Al. <laughs> Uncle. Chris Perez with Bonifacio Hosmer and Butler coming up in the ninth. The Royals are down by two and they have not scored since the third inning. And after getting two in the third they had a three nothing lead. And Cleveland scored one in the sixth, two in the seventh, one in the eighth, one in the ninth. And a rare off night for the Royals bullpen Four of the five runs tonight have been scored against the bullpen. One and one on Bonifacio. Fastball slider. That's what Perez features. 95 mile an hour fastball. That's on the high end. He's typically low 90s. Look for something out over the middle. He'll give you something to hit. You got to find a hole. Biggest hole up there's up the middle. Two and one. Perez is four out of four and. Save opportunities against the Royals this year. Five games, five innings. He has not allowed a run, and he has struck out seven. At the knees for a strike, two and two.
There is some bad blood between the Royals and Chris Perez, and it goes back to early last year when the Indians and the Royals had a bench clearing incident very early in the season. And Chris Perez sent out a tweet which said, You hit us, we hit you, period. And he was fined by Major League Baseball for what was termed a reckless tweet. Right to Cabrera at shortstop, and Bonifacio is out, one down. Well, he had a lot of issues last year, and a little bit this year, but finally he put the tweeter away and said, You know, I'm not tweeting anymore. Sometimes if you can't control what you put out there, you better be careful. Well, it's a runaway tonight in our Sprint Unlimited Answers poll. 72% agree with us. 41 come from behind wins. And that stat is no more important than it is right now with the Royals down by two in the ninth inning. Osmer got the Royals going early. Royals scored in the first inning. With one out, Bonifacio walked, and then Hosmer doubled to get Bonifacio home. And then Eric walked and scored in the third inning. And it's 0-2. Okay, slider coming. He's going to try to keep it down. Hosmer takes the rip, never gets cheated. If I recall, Jonathan Sanchez, remember him? Oh, sure. He hit... Shin Su Chu, right? That's and right. he had hit Chu the year before and broke his hand. That's right. And so Chu started yelling at Sanchez as Hosmer takes a strike. He didn't like the call. And the Royals are down to their last strike. And then in the next half inning, Mike Moustakis was hit, and then the bench is cleared. Well, that's a great low strike. I'm going to tell you right there. You can't get it any lower. So now Billy needs to get on for the Royals to have a chance. A walk and a single tonight. He's one for three. And Perez with a slider for a strike. Billy four out of ten with a home run against Chris Perez. Royals are down to their last strike. The Indians have used seven pitchers. The Royals have used six. And you wouldn't expect anything less with September rosters and important games. Strike over the outside and that ends the game. So all those come from behind wins for the Royals this year. And now the Indians turn the tables on them as they were down 3 nothing until the sixth inning. They were down 3-1 when they came up in the seventh. And Michael Bourne had a big role in the Indians' comeback and eventual win. He had an RBI triple in the seventh inning. He scored the tying run and then some insurance late in the game. He's our Ford player of the game. I'll say after striking out three times last night and getting a hat trick, that's exactly how you come back. You come back with a vengeance. And that last one, ooh, that, that sunk the Royal ship. Big, big hit homer there. Six on the year. So the Indians have evened the series after the Royals won last night 7-1. Game three tomorrow, we'll preview that when we come back.